Fraud is much more common than you think. It is committed by individuals and companies daily and accounts for up to 5% of a company's annual revenue. I'm a student at Santa Fe College and I'm a major in accounting. Throughout the course of my education, I've taken six classes relevant to fraud where it's a major topic, but the most important was auditing. This is where we reviewed cases from huge corporate companies to small mom and pop shops. And what I've learned from this, the main thing is that no one is immune to fraud. Now, there are three common reasons that most people commit fraud. And this is commonly known as the fraud triangle. There is opportunity, rationalization, and pressures. Opportunity meaning that the fraud is, was able to be committed. Let's say you work at a restaurant and you run the deposit every night. So you're the only one who counts it and you bring it to the bank. So there's no one double checking that and you can steal money from it. Rationalization, you can go to any worker and they may be, oh, this company owes me money, you know, they don't pay me enough, so they go ahead and they steal it or they take it for themselves. And that's another reason people commit fraud. And then there is also pressures. These could be outside pressures, maybe financial troubles at home, or perhaps internal pressures from shareholders and you need to hit certain numbers, stuff like that, or you'll lose your job. Now. There are three common types of fraud, and those are asset misappropriation, fraudulent financial statements, and corruption. Asset misappropriation, let's say you work at a car shop as a mechanic, a Jiffy Lube for example, and you go ahead and you bring your cars, your friend's car in on the weekend. That's not yours, you do all the work, you use all of Jiffy Lube's parts, equipment, etc., and then your friend pays you. Well, this would be a good example of asset misappropriation because all of that stuff at the the shop, all of those assets are only supposed to be used for customers. Fraudulent financial statements may be done by a CFO, someone higher up in management trying to keep their job and basically just any fraudulent numbers that you're reporting to the corporate world. And then there is corruption. We'll use Tesla as an example here. Their recently produced cars were supposed to have version 3.0s, equipment, chips, parts in there. When customers dug into their new cars, they had found the previous editions equipment and chips in their vehicles. And that is fraud as well, believe it or not. Now, you might say, fraud doesn't affect these businesses that much. And as I mentioned before, it can account for 5% of their revenue annually. For some companies generating billions of dollars of revenue, that's a lot of money that they're losing out on. And I read that in my textbook from Albrecht. Also, total US fraud every year amounts to $50 billion a year. And I found that in a nice article from Pofeld. And another very common type of fraud is payroll fraud. And this is common in 27% of businesses. If we scale that down to smaller businesses, that number doubles. So that's a lot of money people are losing out on just to fraud. Now, I think fraud is a huge deal and we're gonna find a way to attack this problem for you. And here's the card I used for this.